Hey church, thank you guys for joining us today. My name is Brent, so excited to be with you guys. I'm joined by my co-host Whitney, and we have, I, I always default to saying we have a special guest today, eh. but yeah. I do actually think this guest special? is very special. Is she your sister or? I think she's special because, because of that, yeah. You. You're welcome. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> family love. Just a moment. Hi, Whitney. Hey. <laughs> uh, but we have Emma Contreras with us today. Uh, thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you. We thank I you forgot know. to ask John last week, yeah. but I think he's a pastor's kid. Mm-hmm. We have truly, oh, yet inadvertently, made this entire series <laughs> that our guests the are only pastor's kids. The only non-pastor's the only non-pastor's kid. Pastor's kid. Pastor's kid. <laughs> Get out, Whitney. At this point, no, no. <laughs> Move him along. <laughs> One of us. <laughs> um, but yeah, Emma is, uh, you and your husband, Cruz, uh, lead our middle school, middle school, <laughs> middle <laughs> school <laughs> ministry, mm-hmm. uh, which is E111. Yes. Um, and you're part of the worship team and you work uh, on staff in our lead pastor's office. Mm-hmm. You're a mom. To two real, real cuties. They're very cute. cuties. Yeah, they're cute. Yeah, they they're are cute. adorable. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so this week we're talking about uh, I am the true vine. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had a guest speaker mm-hmm. uh, of no relation to Pastor Tim, but this was Dr. Jason Clark was with right. us on mm-hmm. um, this week. Yes. Um, wonderful accent. Wonderful message. Yeah. it all, An accent always takes me a minute. To adjust, yeah. Like when he, <laughs> when he started speaking, our producer I was like, Kesley, who also has an accent, is offended. <laughs> <laughs> no, it always just takes me a minute. So when he started speaking, I was like, "Okay, here we go, Emma. Time to gear in." And then it takes me like a few minutes, and then I'm like, "Good, I'm here." Yes. Yeah, I'm like, "Here we are." Yeah, it was. I really liked so. M- I mean, I loved what he was talking about in "I Am the True Vine." Mm-hmm. Um, but I think the thing we can just kind of jump right into it. The thing that really stuck out to me that uh dr clark was talking about was this idea of the he talked a lot about pruning mm-hmm. um and how when you cut something back when you prune a vine a bush a tree whatever it is it's those those things are taken away from it and it causes the right stuff to grow yeah. and it causes the proper growth but one of the things that he said was that in the life cycle of a tree or in kind of the health cycle of a tree, trees usually fruit or bloom once a year. Mm -hmm. They're not constantly producing, but we live in a culture and in a society where we're constantly told you should be producing, you should be grinding, you got to be on your hustle. Mm -hmm. And so to hear him talk about the winter seasons, I think was so cool and we can take that in a bunch of different ways because I'm sure yeah. you have winters in your mm-hmm. life. You've probably had winters. And even mm-hmm. looking at my own, I know there's places where I've had a, a winter and it's like, oh, I'm not, I'm just needing to focus on me. There's pruning mm-hmm. that's yeah. been done. There's something that I'm going through. I'm needing to do that. What does that look like in your life mm-hmm. uh, and w- even in your own? Just what have those looked like for you guys? Yeah, I think the I think the key point of a winter, well one, identifying that you're in a winter. So you're not just like yes. beating yourself depressed. up. Identifying, yeah, depressed. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Admitting um, you're in a winter is the first yeah. step yeah, this to is the your first spring. Step. <laughs> <laughs> this yeah, literally. Um, but then it's a conscious decision of, okay, this is where I'm at now. Mm-hmm. And you have two choices. It's mm-hmm. either In my winter, I'm going to be a wreck and I'm going to just fight it and be upset Mm -hmm. or I'm going to allow the Lord to work out whatever he needs to work out Mm -hmm. in me in this season. Um, And normally it starts with the other one where you fight it for a little bit and then eventually you're like, okay, I think I'm going to start like Mm -hmm. coming to terms with what's going on and like moving forward, I guess. And so... um, I, that's what I always like think about when I'm first coming to a winter. I feel like I'm on the tail end of a winter, mm. if not entering my spring. I feel like the Lord, Lord. <laughs> Lord yes. give me spring. <laughs> no, I, like, I feel like the Lord told me a few weeks ago that like you are like that I was done, like that my winter was coming to an end okay. and that I, but it was like, okay. I feel like he was kind of telling me like, Emma, now it's your turn yeah. to step into what's next. Yeah. Because I think it's so easy to get, uh, I mean the winter, like 
if you think of the season winter, yeah. mm-hmm. you get the cocoa, you get the blankets, you hunker Cozy. down and you're yes. like you're suffering, <laughs> yeah. but at least you're warm. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so, so like I think sometimes we can get comfortable in a more difficult mm-hmm. or a more suffering season. You just yeah. get used to whatever's going on. So I kind of felt like in a few weeks ago, the Lord was like, okay, Emma, like I'm bringing you into something new. It's time to mm-hmm. step into that next. Um, but yeah. was that winter like just resting or do you feel like the Lord was teaching you something not to make productivity and rest, but I'm just yeah. curious, like, um, I think it was, a, I think it was lessons. Mm-hmm. I think it was a lesson I needed to learn about, um, my, that I feel like I placed a lot of value in titles. Hmm. Um, okay. I'm a pastor. You have a lot I'm, of titles. I do have a lot of titles. Yeah. And my most important title is God's daughter right. and wife and mom. And those are important titles. And those are my like core titles. Yeah. yeah. But then it's easy to find a lot of value in like pastor or worship leader or sure. all these other different things. And I felt like the Lord was bringing me back to this place of like when I, when I first felt called to ministry in I was in, I was in middle school actually when I felt called to ministry. Um, I just felt called to be a pastor because I just loved people and I just wanted to minister to people. It was that simple. Like it wasn't because I feel like you hear people say like, I felt called to be a worship leader or to be a youth pastor Mm -hmm. or to be, it was never specific for me. It was that I'm just called to be a pastor. And I feel like over time I'd gotten kind of very, I would idolized the titles of a specific type of pastor. And so I feel like my winter was the Lord undoing a lot of things Mm -hmm. and reminding me that all I ever asked you to do was to just pastor people. Wow, Mm -hmm. And you can do that anywhere. Yeah. So if you don't have youth and if you don't have worship and if you don't have a church or anything, like you can just do what God has called you to do Wow. anywhere. Yeah. And so, um, but sometimes the Lord teaches us lessons just through difficult ways. Yeah. And so for me, it was, I just felt like there was just a lot of like deep internal work that the Lord had to do. Right. And it felt like a winter because I just, God was just working a lot of stuff out of me. And even I think Dr. Clark talked about how winter can be painful. Yeah. And I think a lot of what the Lord was working in me came through pain. Sure. And um, yeah, then, but he does his thing and you kind of just submit to it. And I feel like I eventually, it's always whenever, whenever I'm in a winter, whenever I come to the place where I'm like, I don't care. Like when I'm like really surrendered <laughs> uh-huh. is when then the Lord starts like bringing me out. Yes. Yeah. He just wants my surrender. Yeah. And so I feel like I eventually just came to a place where I was like, hmm. I'm just here I am. Yeah. And That's I good. felt like the Lord just kind of started yeah. bringing me out. But yeah, it was like a deep internal work that I don't feel like in that season I was necessarily outwardly producing like sure. a lot of fruit, right. sure. I guess sure. I would say. When I think the, I think that's beautiful because I, I, and I'll say this and then I'll ask a different question because I'm interested in it. I think the, there's kind of this, I forget the exact um, reference of the Bible, but it's, it's something where I feel, I feel like the verse is talking about, um, uh, and they will know who you are by your, mm-hmm. by your good works or mm-hmm. something like that. And I think we think of works and we think of like producing Mm -hmm. and so i I, it's almost like i feel like we get stuck in this thing of like oh but if i'm not doing or if i'm not producing then how are people gonna know how i'm doing yeah and Mm -hmm. it's like your doing physically of something Mm -hmm. does not equate to how are you doing and so in and this is where the question is Mm -hmm. in that winter season Mm -hmm. you can share about it however you want what was that? Because because the Lord was you were saying the Lord was teaching like there yeah. were lessons in it for yeah, you, yeah. which learning and lessons also sometimes uncomfortable as mm-hmm. a winter can be. What were what did you feel like the things you were holding on to were as because like when you're in the winter it's can be bleak. Yeah, so like what was that thing you were holding on to where it's like, Lord, I still know that you're here. Or mm-hmm. This is the thing I'm still holding on to as. 
the hmm. truth that I remember being told that yeah. you're going to sustain me through this or what, what did that look like for you? Oh man. Yeah. I'm trying to think like, what was my, what was my like pillar? I mean, in like a practical sense as a mom, my kids are, I guess not everyone. I'm just acting like everyone knows my kids, um, <laughs> <laughs> which I am very diligent to pull off their name tags right after kids ministry. Mm-hmm. Cause I'm like, I don't want everyone to know their names. <laughs> um, but, such an oddly specific <laughs> pastor's kid. It's thing. like my thing because I don't want someone to no, just call them sense. from across the courtyard yeah, and they like, like run safety. away. Yeah. Anyways, um, but my kids are two and four. And mm-hmm. so one of my it's a struggle. It's my like greatest struggle, but I think it's also my greatest, like it's an asset to mm-hmm. me, mm-hmm. is that I don't have the option to not show up every single day for mm-hmm my little ones sure. um, and my, fa- my whole family as well. Right. Um, but, you know, taking care of two kids, especially that age, like it's not like my There's daughter's no my time. older one. It's not like <laughs> she's like 13. I can just right. be like, Hey, enjoy your show. Like yeah. mama's going to go <laughs> right. over here and have a mental breakdown. You know, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> like, go I watch don't... your brother. Mommy's having a minty bee yeah, over here. Like, just... <laughs> <laughs> like go microwave some mac cheese. You know, it's like, I can't, yeah. I don't have the option to do that. Mm -hmm. And so in a way it's maybe not super spiritual, but just the fact, one thing that I felt like just kept me going was that I just had to keep going every single day, even in the moments where things felt difficult. And as I'm just wrestling through different things and the Lord is like working and there's different circumstances and stuff. Um, even in there's moments where that felt crippling and I wanted to just like go lay in my bed and cry for a little bit Mm -hmm. or go, have a moment to myself, you know, like I just don't always have the luxury of doing those things in the moment that I want to do them. Right. It's normally like after bedtime. Yeah. Um, (laughs) In the three hours every single day that parents get to be by themselves. So in a way, like in a way, I just feel like the nature of my season of life with young Mm -hmm. kids, um, kept me like, I just had to be up and at them. I had yeah. to be like a float. Yeah. Um, obviously the Lord. And I think just remembering um, in everything, just remembering who God has called you to be. Right. Mm-hmm. And I, like I had said earlier, I think that's a lot of what the Lord was kind of trying to like remind me of and almost yeah. reassign to me. Right. Was like, remember, it was always this. It's mm-hmm. not this, this, this. Yeah. It was always this, Emma. Mm-hmm. Um, and so like receiving like I feel like I was like receiving it again in a new way but with any winter season and I said it earlier too my thing is like press in to whatever the Lord is doing let it happen you'll hopefully get out (laughs) sooner yes (laughs) but Uh also um there's no point in suffering if you're not going to come out of it a more beautiful person Mm. that's like my main Mm. thing so in any season of difficulty I'm like Lord if I'm going to be in it then I'm going to walk out of here a better everything, mm-hmm. like everything that I can be better at. I want to be better. Right. At it. Yeah. So yeah. that's a big part yeah. of it. Yeah. And I think that's cool. Cause you were, you were saying that the Lord was kind of re reminding you that it's like, I, Hey, I called you to pastor people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I remember about our mom. Mm-hmm. I remember hearing her talk about years, years later when we were like old enough to ask her these questions and hear yeah. these types of answers. She remembers feeling that call to my children are my ministry basically yeah, right we now that it's like we were her congregation Aww. she was pastoring us and now because of that hmm. she has children that have been launched into the world mm-hmm. somewhat successfully I yeah. th- I, I think we're, we're doing okay mom we've done thanks okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've done okay. but no i really i really like that what's been um because one of the other things <clears throat> excuse me one of the other things uh, Dr. Clark was kind of talking about was the when you're in that winter, there's still the need to be fed and there's still the prunings happened, the growth is getting ready to happen. Mm-hmm. How did you still find places to feed yourself? Mm. Was that just like a schedule change and you adjusted where in your day mm-hmm. you were tapping into that connection with the Lord? Or did you really find a new way to be tapped into the vine? Yeah, I, um, I'm a, I love, like, I love worship. Worship has always been a part of 
even there's been seasons of my life where I haven't led worship, Mm -hmm. um, especially when I've had my kids, like I have been really pregnant and I'm just not (laughs) leading worship in that season. Um, so there's been seasons I haven't led worship, but Mm -hmm. I've always, I'm always very passionate about it. Even worship music in general, Mm -hmm. like I'm always curious, wanting to hear new worship songs, stuff like that. So worship is always a big is always a big part of like a moment in time like that for me when I'm having a hard time is just connecting to his presence in that way. Um, Because especially with my little ones, it's not always the easiest for me to like sit down and read my Bible. Mm -hmm. Um, So worship for sure. What was your question? I feel like I had another one that I was going to say. Oh, no, it was um, in your winter, how did you stay connected to the vine? Oh, yeah, and I had another one, and I feel like I just lost it. But it was good. I remember being like when you were talking, I was like, oh, yeah, that was a really good. One. I was I also asked, like, how did you adjust how you were being fed? Right. Like, did you just change the time in the oh, day? Yes, yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah. OK, OK, we got so there, folks. we got there. <laughs> Worship. But then so up until um, when my husband and I joined the church on the way, we've mm-hmm. been here for almost three years. Mm-hmm. Um, no one knew it, but I was pregnant with my son at that mm-hmm. point. Okay. I was only like nine weeks pregnant when we got here. Um, and so, and then my daughter, obviously my kids are two years apart. So she's like not even two at that point. So I actually wasn't super present at, um, the youth services and at youth, I guess, Mm -hmm. obviously like I always have a heart for our youth. Um, Mm -hmm. I was always praying for them and stuff, but I wasn't necessarily like super connected in the services or even in the like pastoring and planning Mm -hmm. of youth ministry. I was very much in my mom zone. Right. um, Especially when we came here. And I think I just got used to that because that's how we kind of started out Mm -hmm. here. But especially, I feel like that was just a new thing that I just thought like, I'm still passionate about ministry, even though the Lord is kind of like deconstructing Mm -hmm. some things Mm -hmm. right now. And so I was like, I can plug in more there and just serve there and, like I said, the whole thing was God reminding me that my heart is to pastor people. Yeah. And so there are people, like our yeah, youth yeah. are people. <laughs> Absolutely. And so yes, for are. sure. <laughs> and so I feel like I kind of tapped in a little more there and it's been super fun. Um mm-hmm. it I mean, youth ministry is just really fun. It's like very we're fun having ministry. an extreme hide and seek yes. event. Like you don't get to do that with adults, <laughs> no, you, you know. <laughs> so, Imagine on a Sunday morning. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody hey. Some of the games we run in youth. Like the whatever the one is with the noodles oh, in the, the back noodles. of the shirt. Yes. I'm like imagining we, that in that'd me. That'd be hilarious at our retreat, in the courtyard. At our retreat, we taped a kid to the wall. Yeah. Which sounds oh, really I, bad. I it was willing. Like they were willing. It <laughs> yeah. was really fun. Yeah. But it was like, so yeah, the youth stuff is so fun. So I also feel like just finding other places to kind of tap in and just serve. And Mm -hmm. it's like youth ministry is just fun. So to just have fun and like serve the Lord. So I feel like I enjoyed, I, in that season, I particularly like tapped in there and now I'm like, it's fun getting to do more of that together. And it's just in general fun. Yes. Yeah. We spent a lot of time talking about the winter, Mm -hmm. but there's, not necessarily in California, but there's three other seasons, <laughs> mm-hmm. right? Um, and Dr. Clark, I think, kind of touched on some of them. He was, again, more talking about, like, fruit trees. So it's like there's the pruning season, there's the blooming season, mm-hmm. there's the fruiting season, and then there's the, I think, just, like, the tree season. I, 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 forget, tree what the, season. I forget what the fourth <laughs> yes. season is. It's just it's just a tree, right? There's The flowers yeah. are gone, but the fruit's not there. Mm-hmm. Um in some of these other seasons, you'd kind of even reference saying like, you feel like the Lord has told you you're coming out of this. Mm-hmm. And you'd specifically referenced the, when I finally surrendered mm-hmm. or, or type of a thing. You'd, you'd made some comment about yeah. that. Um, wh- what does, as you're coming out of that winter, now you're going into a spring, which would indicate that you're going from stuff was getting ready. Now there's, growing or blooming or whatever Mm -hmm. it would be there can be discomfort in the stretching and the growing yeah now stepping into for those that are maybe watching they're like man i'm in a winter season Mm -hmm. what are you starting to see now that it's like hey if you're in this long bleak winter Mm -hmm. if if there's something you can hold on to this is coming like what does it look like now the transition into Mm -hmm. Hmm. What you're kind of holding on to, right? Because like when you're in the winter, 
even if it's yeah. a couple of weeks, that feels like an eternity. Yeah. It, like, <laughs> it I, can feel long. Yeah, I, th- I think it's just joy. Mm-hmm. Like, what you can look forward to is joy. Um, I feel like the Lord, the, 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 the passage in the Bible, and I don't even have the reference, it says, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like during, like, my winter moments, like, that was always in my mind. Like, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Mm-hmm. Um, and I can trust him. Right. Like I, f- there's a lot of joy in trusting the Lord, mm-hmm. um, that can come from trusting the Lord, but it's yeah. like that surrender moment. Yeah. So I feel like you trust, like you surrender mm-hmm. and then the Lord like gives you that joy. Yeah. So I feel like if anything, there's joy to look forward to, but also, um, not renewed opportunity, but mm-hmm. like just the opportunity to continue to like move forward yeah. and serve yeah. the lord like yeah in whatever that looks like right well i feel like in the resting it like teaches you those lessons right mm-hmm. and then i just bring in your maybe starting to bear fruit and you're going through the uncomfortability of that growth and that newness it's like i feel like that's yeah you're practicing those yeah. lessons that the mm-hmm. lord taught you so it's gonna be uncomfortable and it's gonna be maybe a little difficult in places and then yeah hopefully you get to a full-on bloom of something yeah, yeah. flower <laughs> those fruits of the spirit i think that's beautiful and i love you know we we set it up at the beginning um being your brother and having mm-hmm. been in we, we we do the joke which you're an oldest sibling as well yeah so it's like we joke that i haven't had a sister for all of my life yes. she's had a brother for all mm-hmm. of her life oh, type of a thing yeah, so yeah. it's like you know that's it's just such an honor that she's had that brother for all of her life. And I, mm. and all I can do is just remember the couple of years you. where <laughs> <laughs> you've had a brother your whole um, life. No, but, but with that, I think it's been so cool to see, you know, you talking with the family, but, but knowing kind of some of that season that you were in mm. and knowing how even the kids had become this, you know, beautiful little reminder on both sides of the coin of the season that you were in <laughs> yeah. and how they're like, cause kids have this, yeah. kids have this wonderful way. We were just hanging out with pastor Mario uh, today and he was talking about something his daughter had done as well. It's like they, when they remind you about something, it's not always the most convenient time yeah. and they don't always express it in the smoothest of ways, sure. but there's always some way that in what they're telling you, you're like, that was yes. actually the Lord and talking the directly that to they're telling you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can't refute what they've said, and it's mm-hmm. like oh, painful, but you're proud at the same time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. it's just really cool. So it's been it's been neat to see that, and just to hear your perspective coming through it, because I think it can be, it is a, the saying is like it is an art form, mm-hmm. right? But it is a little bit of an art form to learn how to be comfortable in the waiting, or mm-hmm. how to be, or how to be. Mm-hmm cozy in the winter yeah right yeah, yeah. yeah and so that is something that we have to wrestle with but time and time again i've mm-hmm. seen the lord be faithful mm-hmm. to people that it's not like the winter gets so cold that he walks away right. and then it yeah. finally turns into spring when he comes back mm-hmm. the winter is based on what you were talking about he's got mm-hmm. something he wants us to learn yeah In the winter i always just think of right it's rest yeah. In a way it's right. You're stopping a lot of the activity maybe that you were doing because hopefully God is teaching you something yeah. or at least just for a time taking away from something. Yeah. But rest is so counter culture of what we are taught to be. Mm-hmm. And I think even within church communities, when we have signed on to be leaders or volunteers in a given ministry, and then in those moments where you have to say, maybe, oh, the Lord is telling me to maybe take a little bit of a rest or take right. a little bit of a break, that we have a hard time even admitting that to ourselves or admitting that to yeah. our fellow leaders or like yeah. whatever, like, Oh no, this is a time of rest. Cause it just feels so like that's not allowed or it's looked mm-hmm. down upon for some reason. Yeah. It's hard to reconcile that. Yeah. No, it can be. I think, um, I think it's just important to remember that we just don't know what people are going through. Yes. We yes. only know what people will say. Mm-hmm. Right. And so like, I just think about that sometimes, even when on a Sunday morning, when I'm like walking through the sanctuary or if it's a Sunday that I'm leading Mm -hmm. worship and I'm on the platform, um, sometimes I'm just like, Lord, like, I don't know what these people faced this morning or what they're even, if they're in their winter, if they're in their spring, if they're in their season of joy, whatever, we just don't know. Mm -hmm. And so in a way to, because I'd said it was God bringing me back to the reminder that my calls to pastor people. I feel like it, all of it just helped remind me, like, just have grace with people. Mm. Yes. Um, 
and just be like loving and yeah. kind mm-hmm. and generous mm-hmm. and giving people the benefit of the doubt and not assuming like all those simple yeah. little <laughs> things that it's, it can be hard to do, but it's cause we just don't know. And yeah. there was, um, you know, I wasn't necessarily like the most vocal about stuff I was walking through. I was just walking through things with the Lord and with mm-hmm. close people around me. Um, and asking people for prayer and stuff. But there were times that I would like come to church and it, I'd maybe had a hard morning or something. And I'm like, I don't feel okay, but I'm here, Lord. Yeah. And sometimes yeah. that's the best that someone can do is yes. I don't feel okay, but I'm here. I'm just here. Right. I'm here, Lord. Yeah. So I think just if anything, like just the reminder to all of us that we just don't know what yeah. people are going mm-hmm. through and to yeah. love Love in all seasons. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I like that you say yeah. that. Love for other people. And then I think also just the grace for ourselves. Mm-hmm. Like when you're talking about yeah. like that initial struggle in the winter season of like, mm-hmm. no, this like whatever. But then when you like let it go, yeah. I think that there's a level of grace and like self care that you have to yeah. take to even allow yeah. for that to happen. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's a good reminder. Well, hey, we've been talking about, again, this is part of our I Am series here at the Church on the Way. Um, We've got Pastor Deborah this coming weekend talking about yes. I Am the Bread. Yes. Mother's Day. Yummy Mother's Bread. Day. Invite your mom's to Yummy church. Bread. What's that song? Really, 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 really good bread. <laughs> really good bread. Really good bread. It's in the worship set. So oh, it'll be yeah. great. Like, um, I have wild. no Don't idea. Church this Sunday. <laughs> we'll send it. Um, okay. But no, you might be watching this and mm-hmm. someone sent this to you. Um, maybe the person that sent it to you is saying, hey, I know you're in a tough time. Mm-hmm. I uh, just want you to know some of the stuff that we talked about. Man, we're so glad that this found you. We hope that it was helpful. Mm-hmm. Um, we did not cover everything that Dr. Clark talked about. So please yeah. go back and find uh, this message. You can go to our uh, over on the YouTube channel where you already are right now. Maybe you just opened this up in your text message. But uh, on our YouTube channel, there's a playlist of all the messages. Watch this message because what Pastor Clark talks about with um, pruning and mm-hmm. stuff like that kind of goes hand in hand with what we're talking about Talk with this much. winter season and it's really really fantastic yeah. uh but hey if you're in the area if you're not in the area and you want to watch online 9 15 11 15 a.m on sunday mornings we would love to have you guys join us emma thanks so much for hanging out with us yeah, thank you. and doing this with us yeah. and uh we got two more yeah. weeks, I think, of this mm-hmm. kind of mini series going through sure. the I Am series. We've loved hanging out with you guys. We hope this brought some benefit to you and to whoever you're going to send it to. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. Follow us on YouTube yes. uh, and Instagram. We love you guys. Enjoy the rest of your week. Bye.